Okay, we're good. We're good. All right. Thank you, Randy. Good morning. I'm Ashley Muchink, Bastrop ISD School Board President. I call this meeting of the Bastrop Independent School District order. Let a record show that a quorum of board members is present via telephone or teleconference. That this meeting has been duly called and that a notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Government Code, Chapter 551. On March 16, 2020, Governor Greg Abbott granted a request by Attorney General Ken Paxton to temporar temporarily suspend a limit number of open meeting laws to the extent necessary to allow telephonic and video conferencing meeting in response to the coronavirus COVID-19. In accordance with those suspended rules, we clarify the following. A notice of this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. Although most members of the board are not gathered in a central physical location, we do have a quorum in attendance at this meeting by video conference or telephone. I will do a roll call to identify the board members that are present this morning. Board members, when I call your name, please reply by responding present. Ashley Muching, president, present. Dr. Matthew Mix, Vice President. Dr. Mix, we have to unmute. All right, we'll come back to Dr. Mix. Billy Moore, Secretary. Present. James Allen. Present. Chris Dillon. Chris Dillon. We'll come back to Present. Chris Molly McClure. Present. Kelly Seacats. Present. Present. Kelly Seacats. All right, let's go back up to Dr. Matthew Mix, Vice President. Present. You might be having present and Chris Dillon. Chris Dillon. Present. Present. What the hell? I saw Mr. Dillon on here. I'm present. Present. All right. Uh, we do have a full uh, quorum for the board meeting. We are meeting by using Google. Hangout software applications. Members of the public can watch the meeting via live stream of this meeting, a link on the district's website. For members of the public who have followed the instructions on the meeting notice and have submitted written communication in advance, the board secretary will read the comments into recorded during the public comments portion of the meeting. If you would like to provide comments at a future meeting conducted by video conference or telephone call, please follow instructions on the meeting notice. All our meetings procedures have adhered to a board adopted procedures to the extent practical. An audio recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. The following software application allows for 100,000 people to view at a time. We apologize in advance for any unforese unforeseen difficulties and ask for your patience as we navigate unprecedented conditions. If you have questions about these suspended laws, please call the Office of the Attorney General. At this time, we'll move into our public comments uh, and audience participation. Uh, Ms. Barrientos, do we have any public comments that were submitted and received by today's deadline? Uh, we did have one comment submitted by a parent. However, it was specific to her student. And we've already had a staff member reach out to that parent and um, answered all of her questions. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for, for doing that. Uh, at this time, we'll move uh, to the superintendent's report. Uh, we'll move to uh, number 3A, cleaning of school facilities. Our presenter 
uh, Ms. Sandra Callahan. Good morning. Good morning, board. Um, working with our SSC maintenance provider, uh, we have an update for their action plan for March 23rd through April 3rd at this point. Uh, their plan included, uh, they have an, uh, a manager, custodial manager on the east, uh, east and west area, and they are working with their custodial staff to hit every campus, every classroom. They're using virtual maps and they're making sure that they're cleaning every every campus and every classroom. Uh, the grounds crew, uh, when they're not uh, working and on rainy times, they've uh, been charged with the gyms, locker rooms, weight rooms, coaches office and athletic facilities, our stadium managers working at the, at the stadium. Uh, SSC is using a CDC recommended and EPA registered disinfectant for mag uh, maximum effectiveness. They're working at the campuses and basically hitting every un covered surface of uh, vents, chairs, desks, cubbies, pencil, pencil sharpeners, exposed wall uh, space, sinks and counters, just to name a few. Um, they're also uh, in the restroom areas. They have a machine, a Kyvac machine that actually uh, cleans and disinfects the, the whole restroom and checking soap dispensers, uh, making sure they're filled every day. Uh, also all floors being mopped and sw um, swept uh, using the same disinfectant. Uh, also to note that anytime uh, staff are present in a campus, they are going back after uh, the, at the end of each day and re-sanitizing after staff. Because as you know, we've had to have staff in buildings doing various instructional things. So they did want us to know that they are re-sanitizing at, um, at all areas. So any questions? Are there any questions from the board? Thank you, Ms. Callahan. We we appreciate it. And would you uh, please uh, extend a, a thank you on behalf of the board for uh, their hard work and uh, these uncertain times. And uh, we uh, really appreciate what they're doing. We certainly will. Mr. President. Yes. yes. Mr. President, on behalf of the district, I, I also want to extend a very special thanks to all the uh, SSC staff, the employees, the housekeepers for doing such an outstanding job in such a critical time as they have to come back in after the fact and re-clean uh, and do things. Um, they've been incredibly flexible and, and we know that they're doing everything that they can in the best interest of our kids and our staff. So I just wanted to say a very special thanks and, and also let the community know that uh, and I receive daily updates from them on the work that they've completed. And so um, just to reassure everyone that we're keeping track of every, every classroom and every square foot in this district. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Uh, anything else, Ms. Callahan, on uh, cleaning of the school facilities? Uh, that's all on that one. Okay, uh, let's move on to uh, 3B, which would be food services uh, continuation. Ms. Callahan? Yes, so um, our child nutrition staff, uh, in coordination with SFE, our food service provider, Gold Star, our transportation provider, and our police officers have been doing a great job uh, serving the students lunch and breakfast every day. Uh, Parents and have a, the opportunity to pick up meals um, at eight different locations. Those are noted in the board book. Uh, they can pick up lunch and uh, breakfast at the same time, so they only have to make one trip. Uh, we did get good news today from TDA's waiver to allow parents to pick up meals uh, without students being present. That has been approved, and our food service staff is working on how we're going to be uh, notating that, but working with TDA on that. So that was great news. Uh, that we received this morning on that waiver being approved. Uh, as I said, we have eight sites, five are at campuses, three are mobile. Those have been published and uh, really has gotten information out in many different ways for parents to know where to pick up meals. Uh, so far this week, not including today, we've served 5,714 meals. Uh, again, we are looking at different options depending on uh, what we need to do. If we need to add additional mobile sites for students, we're working with food service every day, making decisions about that. We are going to put buses, actual buses, we're going to sit at our sites. It's hard sometimes for the parents to see where the feeding is. We had some signs, they're kind of, you know, they're small to see from highways. So um, Gold Star has offered to have us, uh, let us put buses at those sites. We'll put signs on them. So that'll just draw more attention. The mobile sites right now are going very well. So we're going to work on the possibility of adding additional mobile sites as, as we go on. Uh, so we did want to extend, as Mr. Edwards said, a big thank you to that everyone that's been involved in that. That's been a, quite an undertaking, but it's it's been working really great and we're 
We want to just keep serving as many students as we can. We're also working on another grant uh, through Baylor University for additional feeding opportunities. So that's going to be submitted today. So we'll keep you up to date on any additional uh, any additional funds we receive. We have received some grants from, um, uh, we received a $50,000 grant uh, for additional uh, funds from No Kid Hungry. And we also received $200,000 in extra commodities. So that's gonna help the food service staff be able to continue to provide the meals. So that's both been great, great opportunities that we've been um, afforded. So any questions on food service? Mr. Edwards, would you like to uh, have a few comments on this line item? Yes, thank you. And again, just extending a, such an incredible special thanks to our food service providers, our administrators, each of, each of our cabinet members has been out to every site. There's it's just heartwarming to see um, teachers out at sites holding up signs and kids leaving us cards that I'll, I'll share with the board under um, in, in a weekly communication, but it's just been an outstanding coordinated effort and just again, heartwarming that we can provide this service and we'll continue to receive feedback for the board's information in the community and extend services as needed. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. And also uh, Chief Bunch, uh, please pass on to your uh, officers as well. We appreciate their uh, assistance and, and uh, all the hard work they're doing and keeping us safe. All right, we'll move to uh, 3C, uh, at home learning, uh, Dr. Oliveres. Okay, good morning, board. Um, Mr. Edwards, it's nice to uh, virtually see everyone. I am going to take just a moment here to share my screen with all of you. Okay, so I believe now you should be able to see my screen. And um, I wanted to share with you the following is a brief summary of the tasks and undertakings by our wonderful curriculum and instruction department as we establish our BISD at home learning continuity plan. Um, we had these three major goals when we set out to establish our at home learning. Uh, first and foremost, we really wanted to ensure the students' most immediate needs were met. Uh, second, we wanted to offer learning enrichment opportunities that all of our BISD students could access. And lastly, it was critically important to us that we cultivate community amongst our BISD teachers and families during these trying times. So the first thing I'm going to show you is our BISD at home Google site which was launched on March 23rd, 2020. This site serves as a one-stop hub for staff, students, and parents to access learning activities. The resources, so what I'm showing here are resources that went live yesterday for next week. The resources on the site are intended to provide optional enrichment during the current cancellation of classes during these first two weeks of school closure, and then direction and support for distance learning as school closures continue beyond the two weeks. Resources include a range of ideas for online and offline activities that students can work on independently at home with family members or with other adults. And it also includes support for special education, 504 students and social emotional learning activities as well. Our CNI team of specialists, coordinators and directors came together very nicely in a short amount of time to put together these robust offerings of lessons broken down by grade level. I'm scrolling through fourth grade for you here uh, in English and in Spanish. I'm very proud of the work they've done and the intentionality and pride in the product that they're putting out for our BISD community. Uh, following each one of the of the templates, there is um, an opportunity for um, staff and uh, community to uh, let us know if they have questions. So we are always looking to interact with them um, as they are undertaking some learning at home. So that's our site. I hope that you get a chance to visit it and uh, let me know if you have any thoughts there. Um, 
We know that continuity and leadership is also very important and that routine actually helps us uh, make order of difficult and trying times. So to that end, um, we um, went ahead and organized our staff members and we gave them the following documents to guide their work this week. So I'm gonna just show you one, uh, but we wanted them to undertake meaningful work, but to do it in manageable chunks. And so on Monday, we asked them to familiarize themselves with our at-home website. So we gave them a preview. And then to also read through our staff FAQ documents. We really understand that communication is very important right now. On Tuesday, we asked them to start tuning up their tech skills in anticipation of migrating to an online learning platform. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we asked them to check in on their students, and I'm very proud of their collective efforts. Um, as of 9 a.m. this morning, um, we have registered 10,035 responses on our data collection form. So our teachers have shown so much care and concern for our students, and we're very proud of how they've come together. Uh, today, we are asking our teachers just to be in fellowship, frankly, uh, with each other. Um, so we're asking them to use some of the conferencing tools that we taught them throughout the week to check in on each other, and then asking them to be in fellowships with their families, get some rest, and we will uh, do it all again next week in our new reality. Um, so those were those guiding documents. We also developed an at-home learning timeline that I'm showing you here so that principals could organize their communication with their respective staff members. So always beginning with the big picture and then breaking things out into a general timeline and then a checklist because like, who doesn't love a good checklist? I love a good checklist. Uh, but so that principals could stay uh, in tune with their staff and really just kind of have the information at hand and communicate it uh, so that they're guiding their teachers and staying on top of new developments. So that was our at-home learning timeline. Um, our BISD teachers utilized this form to do that wellness check and that, inter, uh, and that connectivity and device check uh, with their kids. This is a form where we've been uh, collecting all of their uh, all of the data and uh, that will help us uh, plan moving into the future. Very proud of our special programs department. They created this comprehensive site to support students receiving special education and 504 services. So really the effort here is that we don't skip a beat on FAPE, on instructional services, on related therapies for students, and that we make sure that they are getting all of their needs met from adapted uh, um, equipment all the way to um, having information about upcoming evaluation compliance within uh, that uh, those services. So very proud of that. Um, we hosted our first virtual principals meeting on Tuesday, March the 24th. Again, here, board, our goal was to keep them abreast of new developments and updates in human resources, business office, our CNI team, communications, and most importantly, for them to hear from Mr. Edwards any new updates and developments. We then charged our principals with hosting virtual faculty meetings on Thursday of this week. So I've heard already amazing feedback from our principals. I believe people are hungry for connection and direction and our principals are providing amazing leadership during this time. Finally, we created a paper packet distribution plan for our pre-K through sixth grade students. These packets will be available for curbside pickup at all of our elementary and intermediate campuses this Monday, March the 30th. Uh, packets for seventh and eighth grade will be distributed later next week, and we are uh, in production on those packets all, already and, and in the planning uh, stages. So um, this is just a short sampling. There's been a lot of uh, training. Our digital learning team is training um, all of our teachers in Google Classroom uh, this week and then next week they continue training on a daily basis. So going forward, we're working this week on analyzing the data from our student check-in forms to determine our best course for device distribution. 
Our goal here, board, is to ensure that every household has access to at least one device um, through a sibling match process that we're undertaking. Uh, we're aiming to distribute devices uh, late next week, so we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, we continue to provide support for our teachers via uh, Google Classroom, which is our digital learning platform, and intend to go live with Google Classroom on April the 6th. And we're working, of course, through grading, graduation, class rank, as we get um, all of our um, guidance uh, coming in from the Texas Education Agency. Um, I want to close um, my part by letting you know how proud I am of our teachers, our principals, our students, and especially our CNI team. Uh, they've worked tirelessly to produce really quality products in a short amount of time. Um, I believe everybody's doing their part, staying positive and committed to our at-home learning uh, to ensure continuity and student success. So, um, you know, trying times definitely, but uh, definitively we are on the move and we are working hard to get our students and our teachers uh, and our principals everything that they need. Very proud to be a part of this team. Uh, I'm going to stop presenting and uh, pause uh, for questions and if no questions, I'll go ahead and go back on mute. I have a quick question, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned devices um, and allowing those. Uh, my understanding uh, from a few parents is devices aren't a problem. It's more internet accessibility. And I don't know how we would positively affect that. But have you, um, is that something that y'all are looking into when the teachers are touching base with the students? Yes. So we asked them both questions. We asked them about internet capability. And then we also asked them about device capability. And um, the internet capability is a little tougher to tackle uh, because uh, we've looked into, for example, providing hotspots. And, um, you know, it's not an issue of, of funding. It's more an issue of we could provide a hotspot. But if in that part of the community, there isn't the infrastructure that hotspot uh, would would not be um, you know able to be in play. So we are working through that. We have that question specifically in our data collection, and we'll be trying to address uh, those issues uh, the best that we can. Yeah, one other question, and then I'll let others speak. Is um, I saw the SED and um, 504, um, but I didn't see anything about the GT. Um, and other programs like that. Are those going to be um, pushed out later as well? Yes, sir. So guidance is coming, um, forthcoming on our bilingual programs. So right now the first step, uh, for example, on the bilingual program was to get everything in English and in Spanish, but then we're working through guide, guidance for our bilingual teachers for language of the day. Uh, we're going to be working with our GT teachers for how they can provide enrichment opportunities. But I will say every teacher has been tasked with creating their own Google Classroom. So I know that our GT teachers will be coming probably together to do that either collectively, like in a PLC format where they can get ideas from each other or and, and or they'll also have their own Google Classroom and be providing students uh, enrichment supports that way. Same nice. thing Thank for you. dyslexia services, same thing for you know other services, so on and so forth in terms of therapies. Got you. Thank you so much. This is a huge undertaking. You've done a okay. wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mix. Um, I'd just like to add to that that the teamwork is just incredible. And it's it really makes me proud to see uh, what Bastrop ISD is doing. It seems like you have, have really covered everything. Every every brain has been active, I think. And <laughs> but uh, seeing the, the process of feeding everyone. Um, the um, looking at that curriculum that you've put out, it's I would be excited to be a teacher. It, it just would bring on excitement. So thank you for all the hard work. It's really an as um, Dr. Mix said, it's an incredible undertaking. But I believe that our our team has really I'm I'm very proud of how you have met that challenge um, and done it in such an excellent way. 
Right. And as you know, uh, we don't do anything in isolation. It has been a very collaborative process. Um, right. Partnerships with our CNI team, partnerships with our cabinet, partnerships across departments, uh, and with our campus leaders and our teachers. Uh, we are we are holding tight to our partnerships with our teachers, um, and we really feel we're going to leverage uh, some some good distance learning uh, opportunities here. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. Any other comments for Dr. Oliveras? Yeah, I would just like to reiterate uh, Ms. McClure's comments, uh, Mr. Muchnik, and, and kind of help put this in perspective. This morning, I missed an opportunity to get jump on a, a virtual call with our CNI department. And so I want to take advantage of this opportunity to just personally thank them. Because when you look at the quality and the breadth and of the uh, information that we've provided and the opportunities, it's, it's sort of miraculous especially when you put it in perspective. We've been closed for four days, ladies and gentlemen. We announced this last week on Thursday. So we were meeting during spring break. You add spring break, it's been nine days to pull all of this together in such a high quality manner. The amount of time that they've spent, the collaboration has just been incredible. And I personally, I'll even get choked up a bit talking about it at how hard these people are working and on behalf of all of us my most sincere thank you. It doesn't seem to be enough to say thank you. Again, sincerely thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Edwards and uh, Dr. Oliveras, please extend a, a thank you to, to all the faculty. This is amazing. I know that I've been in communications with Mr. Edwards two to three times a day, even through spring break. And so these are some of my questions and uh, you know, he kept reassuring me. Uh, and of course, this is the first time we'll get to see it, that these things are, are in motion taking place that they're out there so uh thanks for all the hard work and i know we got some more to do here thank you a couple comments uh for dr Oliveras. um just wanted to say thank you for being available this week and taking my call you answered a lot of questions so i really appreciate that with a senior this is not personal but with a senior i get a lot of calls from parents with respect to class rank, curriculum, and so forth, and you were very helpful in answering the questions that possibly TEA is gonna make some recommendations down the road. It will come to a board vote, but you talked about the fairness and so forth, and I think that's the, the calls that I've been getting since I have a senior from other senior parents that are saying, what's gonna happen, what's going on? Um, but after our call yesterday, I've returned those calls and told them, obviously you're available, but passing on the message that you gave to me, um, the BISD is going to be do nothing but be fair. Um, obviously based on TA recommendations and the recommendation from Barry and his team, um, and then a board vote. But uh, I do thank you for being available um, for my calls and questions, and then uh, available to, to other parents. So very impressed with our conversation yesterday. And I'll, I assure you, if I have any more, I'll reach back out to you. But Thanks again, uh, Dr. Oliveras, for being so professional and being on top of everything. Thank you. All right, any more comments? Uh, yes, Ms. Pratt, one more. On that note of seniors, thank you, uh, Mr. Allen. I did want to let the board know, it was in the, in the letter to parents and community. We're in the works of putting together with our high school principals. Um, we're going to do a, a virtual meeting with our seniors. Because what I, we think it's important that we reach out to the kids personally and invite them to come on to a, a Google meeting such as this so that we can talk to them directly, reassure them. Um, we're just going to wait for a little bit more definitive answers because we know they have a lot. But we'll be reaching out to our students personally just so you, that you all know that um, with our principals. So again, Lila, thank you to your group and uh, to our principals for the outstanding work that they're doing. All right. We'll move on to uh, agenda item 4A. Uh, this is our action items. Uh, this one does not require uh, an action uh, at this time. So we'll, uh, we will go to the 4A, which is uh, consider approval of policy changes to DEA local employee compensation and benefits compensation plan. Uh, presenters, Ms. Leifer. Good morning, board. How's everybody doing? Um, due to the fact that Bastrop ISD is experiencing emergency closure due to the public health risk of COVID-19, um, there's some need for some clarification for our policy DEA local with regards to um, non-exempt employee pay. 
Um, currently, the policy states that a non-exempt employee will be paid at a premium rate, which is time and a half um, for all hours worked within that 40-hour work week. We would like the consideration of an approved resolution, which is the next item on the agenda, with language to reflect that we would pay that premium rate of um, one and one half times um, when they are required to work on site to perform essential job functions. All other employees shall continue to be paid at their regular rate. So we recommend that there are no changes. <clears throat> are there any questions? So I cannot hear Ashley. There you go. I got to take it off mute. I'm sorry. I can hear you. Um, this might be a question for Ms. Callahan. The um, the time and a half is something that's going to be a new expenditure to the, the, the budget, the calendar year budget. Uh, are we seeing anything out there that that might be uh, reimbursed back from the state or federal government? Or is it too early? Uh, well, actually, there has been a word from FEMA. There's actually a FEMA uh, call today at one o'clock. Uh, but they are uh, advising that we keep it, uh, track of all additional expenditures, such as time and a half, uh, any costs that we are incurring uh, during this closing. And so we'll keep track of that. And much like with the fires, we, we uh, submit the FEMA claim. Of course, that time it was through the county. This time it'll be a, a district claim. Uh, we're getting that set up and getting an account set up. We're in the process of that right now. So we're going to keep track of that. And I anticipate that we will receive some um, reimbursements from that, just from what I'm hearing. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any other comments for uh, Ms. Leifer before we move on to 4B? All right, this time we'll move on to 4B. We'll consider uh, approval of a resolution of the board uh, regarding wage payments during emergency uh, school closing. Ms. Leifer? Okay, so I'm going to take this opportunity to um, share my screen so that you guys can actually see the resolution. So I can get that here. Nope. Let's see. Uh, for some reason, I can't get the resolution to come up. So it doesn't look like I'm able to present from here. I'm trying a couple options. Have a little patience, please. Okay, well, I'm just going to continue to read. I apologize that it's not coming up for the screen. Um, so the resolution of the board regarding wage payments during emergency school closing. Closings. Whereas the Board of Trustees of the Bastrop Independent School District is authorized by Texas Education Code Section 11.151 to govern and oversee the management of the public schools in the district. And whereas on March 13, 2020, the governor of the state of Texas declared a statewide emergency and later the same day, the president of the United States declared a national emergency regarding COVID-19. And whereas the board acknowledges that COVID-19 is an unforeseen and unavoidable emergency of urgent public necessity that the World Earth Health Organization has declared COVID-19 a pandemic and that additional emergency declarations may follow in the coming days and weeks. And whereas the board acknowledges that a need exists to close the district for normal business operations due to the governor's executive order to close Texas schools and for the duration of the public health risk associated with COVID-19. And whereas the board acknowledges that when the district experiences an emergency closing, most district and transportation employees are instructed not to report to work and other employees may be called upon to provide emergency related services. And whereas the board acknowledges that in order to serve students, certain employees shall return to work for the preparation and delivery of instruction and other limited but essential support services. 
It is therefore resolved that the board authorizes the continued closure of the school district for normal business operations, but authorize the return of certain instructional services and support staff. Be it further resolved, the board authorizes continued wage payments to all employees, contractual and non-contractual, salaried and non-salaried, up to regular scheduled work days per day, work hours per day. Be it further resolved, the board authorizes that non-exempt employees who are required to work on site during emergency closing shall be paid at the premium rate of one and one half times the regular rate for pay for all hours worked on site up to 40 hours per week. Overtime for time worked over 40 hours in a week shall be calculated and paid according to law. Be it further resolved, the board authorizes the superintendent at his discretion to continue payments under the existing contracts with outsourced contractors during emergency closure of the district. Be it further resolved, the board authorizes the superintendent to designate the time period for which disaster premium rate wages are paid to non-exempt employees who provide emergency related services on site and wage payments to idled employees. Are there any questions at this time? Any further discussion for the board? At this time, I, Ashley Muchink, make a motion to approve. Quick question. Go ahead, Trustee Dillon. Tanae, I, I just want to be sure I understand. We're leaving all the discretion to Mr. Edwards, the superintendent, to, to continue the payments, um, but nothing's changing in regards to anyone's, uh, any of the teacher's salary or anything like that, correct? That is correct, sir. All right, any, any other questions? Okay. All right, this time I, Ashley Muchink, make a motion to approve the resolution of the board regarding wage payments during the emergency school closings. Do I have a second? I second. Kelly, CCATS, second the motion. Uh, at second. this time, I will do a roll call for your vote. Uh, Mr. Muchink, in favor? Dr. Mix? Aye. 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 Chris Dillon. Aye. Molly McClure. Aye. Kelly C. Katz. Aye. Motion carries. All right, this time we'll move on to uh, item uh, C. We will consider postponing the May 2020 uh, board election and bond election to November 2020. We have a presenter, Dr. Lee. Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am going to share with you uh, the order declaring this postponement for your consideration. Uh, whereas the Bastrop Independent School District is a political subdivision of the state of Texas and the Board of Trustees of the district has previously ordered that certain order calling school building bond election and order of election for Bastrop Independent School District trustee election and all together with the bond election order calling elections to be held within the boundaries of the district on May 2nd, 2020. Whereas the public health risks posed by coronavirus disease 2019 have resulted in the closure of schools and businesses and governmental decrees restricting and prohibiting public gatherings statewide and such closures, restrictions and prohibitions are reasonably anticipated to interfere with the elections. And whereas district administration continues to evaluate and respond to new and evolving recommendations and guidance related to public health and safety from national and state educational and public health officials, including the governor of the state, Greg Abbott. Whereas pursuant to section 418.0118, Texas government code, the governor issued a proclamation on March 13th, 2020, certifying that COVID-19 poses an imminent threat of disaster in the state and declaring a state of disaster for all counties in the state. And whereas pursuant to Section 418.016, Texas Government Code, the governor issued a proclamation on March 18, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the Texas Election Code to allow all local political subdivisions that are utilizing the May 2nd, 2020 
uniform election date to postpone their elections to the November 3rd, 2020 uniform election date. And whereas the governor suspended certain provisions of chapter 551, Texas government code as amended, to allow governmental bodies to conduct meetings via teleconference or video conference, subject to certain provisions of the proclamation. And whereas the board has determined that the public health risk posed by COVID-19 threaten the health and safety of voters and election officials in the district, and that such threat to the health and safety of voters and election officials is expected to persist throughout the period for early voting and election day voting for the elections. Whereas the board has further determined that the adversity, economic disruption and turmoil caused by COVID-19 and the related measures implemented by national, state and local governmental authorities, business organizations and other stakeholders in response to COVID-19 are expected to endure for many months and throughout the remainder of this year, resulting in unknown operational and financial challenges in the nation, the state and the district which may impact the needs of the district for bond financed improvements. And the proclamation only allows postponement of the bond elections to the November 3rd, 2020 uniform election date, a date that the board expects will occur in the midst of such unknown operational and financial challenges facing the nation, the state and the district. Whereas in the absence of legal authority to cancel the bond election or postpone the bond election to a date beyond the reasonably anticipated period of operational and financial challenges inflicted by COVID-19, the board hereby finds and determines that it is in the best interest of the district to postpone the elections to the November 3rd, 2020 uniform election date, unless and until such time as the board is authorized by law to cancel the bond election or postpone the bond election to a date beyond the reasonably anticipated period of operational and financial challenges inflicted by COVID-19. Um, so with, with all of that being said, um, it is my recommendation that the board ad adopt an order, this order declaring postponement of May 2nd, 2020 elections and providing for other matters incidental and related thereto, um, unless and until such time as the board is authorized by law to cancel the bond election or postpone the bond election to a date beyond the 2020 calendar year, or the board finds that the period of operational and financial challenges inflicted by COVID-19 has abated to the extent that the bond election should proceed. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, is there any discussion? Mr. President, we have all seen the hard work our community has put in to address the absolute dire needs our district has to be able to adequately provide for our students and our community as a school district. We are grateful for their service and hope they, they will continue with this service for the betterment of Bastrop ISD. With that being said, I believe that the adversity, economic disruption and turmoil caused by COVID-19 and the related measures implemented by national, state and local governmental authorities, business organizations and other stakeholders in response to COVID-19 will endure for many months and throughout the remainder of this year, resulting in unknown operational and financial challenges in the nation the state and the district, which may impact the needs of the district for bond financed improvements. Yet we've been advised by the governor's proclamation only allows us to postpone the bond election to the November 3rd, 2020 uniform election date, when we could still be experiencing unknown operational and financial challenges. Accordingly, in the absence of legal authority to cancel the bond election or postpone, postpone the bond election to a date beyond the reasonably anticipated period of operational and financial challenges inflicted by COVID-19, I submit that any action to postpone the bond election to the November 3rd, 2020 uniform election date should recognize and be conditioned on the board's interest in revisiting such action in the event the board is authorized by law to cancel the bond election or postpone the bond election to a date beyond the reasonably anticipated period of operational financial challenges inflicted by COVID-19, or the board finds that the period of operational financial challenges inflicted by COVID-19 has abated to an extent that the bond election should proceed on another date. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dillon. Any other comments from the board? Yeah, actually, I just wanted to um, say I certainly agree with what uh, Chris's comments um, on and I, I really appreciate the state and the district being sensitive to what's going on um, 
although we are in, in dire need uh, of what this this community or this committee put together, I do think it's important that we're sensitive and that's that's what looks like it's happening. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can regain um, this excitement at a later date when it best fits our community. And obviously right now we've got to be sensitive to the surrounding and surroundings and what's going on. Was it, but it does not take away uh, the appreciation that this board has and that I personally have for the people that have been involved in getting this ready to go. We had a lot of momentum. Things change, obviously. We're um, sensitive to that. And, and I look forward to this subject coming back up at a later date and a better time for our entire district and community. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Any other comments? All right, at this time, I, Ashley Muchink, uh, make a motion to adopt an order declaring postponement of the May 2nd, 2020 uh, election and providing of other matters incidental and related there, there too, unless and until such time as a as the board is authorized by law to cancel the bond election or postponement the bond election to a date beyond the 2020 calendar year, or the board finds that the period of operation and financial challenges inflicted by COVID-19 has abated and abated to an extent that the bond election should proceed. Do I have a second? Second. Billy Moore, second it. At this time, I will take roll call for uh, your vote. Uh, Ashley Muching, in favor. Dr. Mix? In favor. Mr. Moore? In favor. Mr. Allen? In favor. Mr. Dillon? In favor. Ms. McClure? In favor. And Ms. Seacats? in favor. All right, motion carries. Uh, Mr. Edwards, is there any other um, items that need to be discussed in this meeting? Before um, I, Mr. Mr. I would just like to add, thank you so much for your support on, on that last vote. Um, the most important thing right now is that we take care of our community and take care of each other. The bond election, just like Mr. Allen said, is critically important to the future of the school district. However, this takes precedence over that. And so we appreciate the confidence that you show in allowing us the opportunity to try to push this forward until such time that we have the district, our community and our students stabilized. And so again, thank you for your support. I do not have any further business uh, to offer other than thank you for y'all's support. I ask anyone that's watching this, please first and foremost, take care of yourself so that you can serve others. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Edwards, and I would like to extend on behalf of the board a, a, a thank you for your leadership. I reflect back to the day that, that we named you interim and then uh, chose you as our uh, superintendent and the, the hands-on and the uh, sincerity, the approachability, the hard work and dedication. I, I could not ask for more. It's been extremely uh, impressive uh, and your team behind you, uh, Thank you as well, and we really appreciate your leadership. Anything else from the board? All right, at this time, is there any objections to adjourning this board meeting? If there are none, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Yes, definitely. Bye.